here we have the classic Mini Moog synthesizer and uh, one chronic problem that we've experienced in a lot of time gone by is there are these little silver trim pots that are mounted on the PC boards and we found that they go bad. If we put a screwdriver in here and actually rotate the control, we can feel there's a little indentation that uh, forms. It's a nylon form in here where we have wire wound around the nylon form and over time it uh, changes its shape and the little arm there wants to rest in a little divot that it pushes into the nylon. For a long time we've been trying to figure out how to replace these trim pots which are crucial to tuning the instrument and so we came up with a what we think is a brilliant idea. We made a little adapter board so that now we can put a standard commonly available control in place of the original pot and we simply laid out a little circuit board that is now an adapter board and the adapter board has little pins, little standoffs, stakes that go into the PC board here. You can see the stakes coming through the back. We solder those down and uh, that makes the new pot mount in the same position and then you can tune your Mini Moog with brand new controls. So we're going to show you how to uh, change them today. You can put some new life into your Mini Moog. You can have much more control over its tuning and they tend to stay put. It's a really great thing. We're going to have two models, single turn trimmer and we're also offering a uh, multi-turn version which is a little harder to get to the trimmers but it makes it much, much, much easier to tune up. If you're ready, we'll dig in and show you how to change the trim pots. <laughs> All right, so to start with, uh, one of the things we want to point out is that you should be safe. Um, you don't want to have it plugged in. Make sure it's unplugged from the wall, unplugged from your amplifiers, and uh, don't have anything connected to it in any way before you start this procedure. To change these trim pots, we need a few tools. So we need our solder sucker. This is a solder sucker. This is solder wick. And those are desoldering components. A roll of some solder to re-solder. We have a screwdriver, my pair of diagonal cutters, and a pair of needle nose pliers. I like to have some uh, Q-tips and acetone handy so that we can clean up our work. It makes uh, it look very nice if you can get rid of all the flux and dirt and whatnot that um, accumulate when you're soldering and desoldering. This is one of the little tricks I have is to clean things up and it allows you to inspect your work carefully and then you have less error. So you have greater success when you do a nice clean job. So the first step is to remove the back panel. You'll find the screws that retain the back panel are around the edges. So just carefully take them out. Try not to lose them. Go. Now the cover just comes off very simply. Just pull it gently away from the chassis. Okay, and we'll set it aside for now and uh, we'll move on. Now I like to put a little block under here, a block of wood. I have a stack of a little wooden box and a 2x4 that I use as a brace to hold this up. So. So in the Mini Moog, this is the oscillator board, and these are the trim pots that give us a lot of grief when we're trying to tune the Mini Moog. We have the uh, range and scale pot for oscillator 1, 2, and 3, and this is the octave trim pot. The board is held in place by two screws, one on the left, one on the right, and there's a washer, a plastic washer, a fiber washer, uh, behind the board which spaces it out from the chassis so that things don't short out. We're going to take out these two screws. And the two little washers fall out, but that's okay. We'll just grab them. And then I find the easiest way to lift the board out is just put a little screwdriver underneath the edges of the board and gently walk it up, and it comes right out. And there we have it. First step in the uh, pot replacement is removal. So these four points right here are the four feet 
of the existing control and we want to remove them. So I want to use my solder sucker here. And I'm going to heat up the, the contact and suck the solder off with the solder sucker. I find it's often a little help to actually solder the connections before trying to unsolder them. So we add a little fresh solder and this breaks down any oxide that is built up over time. It just requires a little timing, a little technique, but in the end of the day works very well. Once you remove the solder, flip the board over and you should be able to wiggle this pot and just lift it right out, very gently, very easily. A little uh, acetone on the end of the Q-tip and I just clean the board up a little bit here. I'm going to flip it over, clean up the back side, just gently now, don't work too hard. And look at that, nice and pretty. So we have the PC board, we have the pins, which are standoff pins, and this is the new replacement trim pot. And this all fits together into a nice little sub-assembly, and we're going to show you how to put this together now. So you have to insert these pins with the little sharp end into the holes. So I've got my soldering iron and my solder. And I'm just going to go around and put a little bit of solder right on each pin. Just like that. Next, we're going to clip off those little tails right there. So one thing I like to be careful of is when I'm snipping this, it'll launch that pin and I don't want it getting in the rest of my equipment around the area here, so I'm going to make sure I capture it. Sticks to my finger, but that's all right. There we go. So we have cut off pins on the top, our adapter feet on the bottom. Next, we insert our trim pot, our new trim pot, in the board. Turn that over, and we'll solder these. Turn this a little bit. There we go. It's a good idea to pause and carefully inspect your work. I have a magnifying glass that I like to use to take a real close look and make sure everything's soldered real nicely and uh, we don't have any loose connections here. Next, we'll insert this into our PC board again. So here's the board we removed the pot. Here's the old pot we took out. Here's the new one we're going to insert. Okay, now these have little, these are actually pins. We're adapting them from another purpose and we want to push this board down until it kind of snaps in. And you see that it ends up, if you can see that, just about the same height as the original pot. And we're going to turn it over, and we need to solder these to the PC board. So I like to heat the pin until it gets hot enough to flow nicely onto the board. Don't try and heat the, the traces on the board first, you'll burn them out. So now one thing I wanted to point out is that our design here is intended to be uh, as user friendly as the original design. We've located the pots such that when you restore the back cover, you can still tune the Minimoog without having to take the cover off.